Mr. Fegler, thank you for joining us in uh, Euronews. Demography is a growing uh, concern for most European countries, but it seems that in Greece it's a more pressing problem. Why is that? Absolutely, indeed. Demography is one of the defining features of Europe's uh, policy challenges. And in Greece it's pronounced because the number of young people, including working age, which includes you and me, is shrinking faster than the rest of Europe. So instead of having more people who can and will work, there'll be less. So there need to be measures to counter what's been called the decline of the working age population. You have spoke about two unpopular policy measures that could help increase uh, the Greek workforce. Could you walk us through these measures? Yeah, the two, uh, I call it unpopular uh, also because they're the easiest, at least quantitatively easiest. One is to increase the retirement age because today people are, you know, healthy and often dynamic in the 60s and even 70s. And some of the jobs can also be done by people who are what we consider older people. And so if we change the way we think about retirement, that will add a lot of potential new workers and contributors to the Greek economy. The other is immigration. There is um, in other parts of the world, there's a lot of young people, of talented young people. And if Europe would incentivize young talents, not just to go to the US, America, but also to Europe or to Greece, then we would also be able to close the gap we will be facing. Let's see each one separately. You talked about increasing the retirement age. How much can we work? I mean, in what age? Uh, the 70s, the 80s? Well, first of all, why not? And I think people should decide themselves. And I think we need just to change a bit more our overall mentality to work in life. There's a lot of studies that actually show that when you work very, very hard to a certain age and then suddenly you stop, it's, it's not very healthy. It would be much better if you have a gradual, much more flexible way, self-determined way to decide when um, and how long you work. Um, now, <clears throat> it's important to separate the different type of jobs, the jobs our parents or grandparents had maybe in coal mines, in factories, are not prone to somebody who is in his 60s or 70s. But many of the white collar jobs, actually people get better. People get better at editing. People get better in human resources. People get better at many of the social jobs if you are older. And so why should somebody who is very strong and talented, um, even as a journalist uh, in being age 65, suddenly stop to work? So that itself, allowing for that flexibility would open a lot. The other part is that in Greece, like in the rest of Europe, many people start to slow down quite dramatically in their 50s. And I think countries like Greece cannot afford anymore to have very strong, talented workers in their 50s not working. What do you mean they slow down? Well, they work less. There are partially in, in a country like Germany, we have this what's called um, partial early retirement at end 50s, but also in, um, in, in, in Greece, especially, but in other countries in Southern Europe, many of the, uh, there's a very, it's a lower share of women participating in the workforce. Um, and then they still work very hard, often with their families, but they're not part of the formal workforce. And there is another potential of adding, you know, adding additional talent to the labor force. And you also mentioned the migration. Uh, Greece receives an um, increasing number of uh, migrants that try to pass uh, to the rest of uh, the European countries. Do you think there is a way we could uh, use these uh, people, probably keep them in the country and uh, um, include them in the workforce? It's a very challenging topic because not you know every migrant can be easily integrated or is willing to integrate and so it's not there's not a simple solution however um there is uh, put it that way there is greece is a is a very good location because it's a very it's the center of the world it's uh, in a very pleasant climate so people want to come to greece and if you make it easier for people to come and locate in greece people from Northern Europe, also people from other parts of the world. Then, um, as, as Spain is now doing uh, relatively successfully in Portugal, that will already add to the economic momentum. With um, migrants, um, it depends a lot on skills and their capacity to integrate into the Greek society, the Greek economy, or for those who have difficulty learning the Greek language, then to 
see if they can work in an international setting uh, to, and then for that they would need English. So there's a lot of variables in there, but clearly, um, and I know the discussion in other countries, including my home country, if people can work and want to work, it'll be very logical that people would be allowed to work. And there's a lot of also service jobs uh, in the, you know, giving the Greece tourism industry is so strong where people could be integrated. So it depends. Um, it's not easy to integrate everybody, but those who are ready for integration um, would be very helpful for an economy like Greece to go in that direction. And are there ways to increase participation among the labor participation among the Greek population? So there's um, two other main sources of um, additional um, labor force for Greece in the future. Then uh, maybe let me premise this. It's very important to understand that um, babies are important and we all you know, love our children. But in the short term, that will not solve the issue. Fertility will not solve Greece's short or medium term demographic challenge, nor does it for Germany or other countries. It will, this is lo very long and medium term. So in the short term, you need to make use of the existing population that you have. And there is a big gap between those who do work, which is roughly 4 million Greeks, and those who theoretically could work, which is more than 6 million in Greece. Now, where do these two extra 2 million people, could they come from? One is, as I mentioned before, um, women who drop out of the labor force in the 30s, in the 40s, and have a lower rate uh, compared to Spain uh, or other south, even southern countries. And if you would just match, say, Spanish or Portuguese labor force participation rate of women, that would give you a roughly 10 million people every year. And Greece would only need 30 million to close the gap that is opening up. The other um, bigger measure is in education, which is an area Greece is already quite strong. Greece is known for for tech, Greece has very strong female and male um, participation rates in university and secondary school. But like any other country, there's still a small gap to close from basically 88% to 100%. And if Greece would match, say, where, where Sweden or Holland is, that would, again, add more people into the productive workforce because people who have um, education at secondary or tertiary level are likelier to have a good job uh, and a job later on and also longer to have longer job because it's exactly the type of people that I mentioned that then can easily work into their 60s and beyond. Mm -hmm. And we, But we keep connecting the size of the workforce with uh, the competitiveness and uh, the productivity of a country and given the enormous progress that has been uh, made by uh, new technologies and AI, isn't this idea a bit outdated? I mean, um, technology is already replacing humans in so many le levels. Um, don't we need less working people in the future? Um, well, somebody still has to manage and design the robots, uh, even though it's a very good point. The thing is, um, I would say uh, to your viewers at Euronews that we had that discussion before. Um, we are in a new cusp of AI, but we have been there when the computer was invented. We were there when the internet started. And it was always a belief, well, there'll be less jobs. Uh, no, there were never less jobs. There were different jobs and more productive jobs. Uh, and you know, I would say more fulfilling jobs because you don't have to do more of the repetitive standard jobs. My mom was a secretary. She had to type all the letters, the same letters over and over again. And so now things become easier, but there is still work for uh, secretaries for accountants because it's different work, maybe more analytical work um, or a better work. A doctor can give better diagnosis. So all of this where AI can help. Greece today has a population of 11 million and roughly 4 million are in the formal workforce. So you, already today you have quite a gap between those like you and many of your viewers who are part of the official workforce and those who are part, benefiting from the productivity of those of the workforce. So at least history told us there will always be new work and more meaningful work. And as long as if a country has challenges, um, be it in the transport sector, be it in health, be it in education, there's a need for people to solve those or if at all design robots or uh, data systems to improve the health, the education, the transport system. So, so far in our history, the, the issue that technology has led to, at least in the recent history, to mass unemployment, the industrial uh, 
obviously transformation that happened um, in that tra early transition, but in the long term, there were always more jobs, not less jobs. Thank you very much for your insight.